Absolutely. Uh, I do a lot of videos, um, whether it's for people that are on a weight loss journey or people that are just trying to break old um, patterns or habits, things that might be generational, right? You hear a lot about generational curses. Mm. I, don't, I don't really talk about curses. I talk about cycles because normally it's just things that keep getting passed down, passed down until someone goes enough. I just yeah. want to stop this, right? So um, we, a lot of even often right? There are certain traumas that can happen to people that cause them to hold on to weight for protective reasons, right? I've seen that a lot in some clients where they're eating healthy, they're working out, and they still can't drop the weight. And it's because it becomes like a protective shield to them where until they heal certain traumas within their energy and within their mind, um, they they can't actually release. Wait a minute. So weight has to be released. You're telling me someone who's eating right, exercising right, could still retain their weight because they're not releasing something psychologically? Yeah, or energetically. I've seen that a lot. Um, I, I've seen that with different trauma victims that absolutely, I can, I can write the perfect diet for them and they can follow it to a T. And, you know, if, if certain things haven't been released internally and energetically and mentally, right? That, like it's a whole process. Um, there are mindsets that, that go into this as well. So there are mindsets that, you know, our parents didn't necessarily know any, any better when they were telling us to finish everything on our plate. Mm. And that mindset doesn't actually work in adulthood, but because we learned it as children, it's uh. still in the back of our mind, our subconscious mind that we have to finish everything on our plate. So really? like, unraveling some of those things and unlearning certain things is actually a huge thing. You know, I remember I, I went to a steakhouse recently and um, I was full, but I was looking at the plate and I was like, I paid a lot for this damn steak. I'm finishing this damn steak. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that's a mindset thing from generations or the fact that this is a lot of money for the steak. I'm going to finish it. I don't like takeout, not takeout, um, uh, leftovers, leftovers. Or, or, you know, take doggy bags or whatever. Cause I'm not feeding the dog my steak. Okay. So to your point, yes, those are habits for different reasons. My reasons are different. All right. But I can see that as an issue, but go on, go on. No, it's it's really interesting that, that you said that because I went to, um, my dad and I met in Vegas. My family's all on the East Coast. I'm in LA. My dad and I met in Vegas last year. We have a, a very similar palate. So we often order the same exact thing. So we did just that at a restaurant, ordered the same thing. It was amazing. But I automatically, you know, he's six feet, 200 and, you know, 30 pounds. And I'm five feet, one and three quarters. So mm -hmm. I ate half of it and I got a to-go box because I do not have issues with a to-go box. And, uh, <laughs> that was a little shade. A little shade. <laughs> <It was> a <laughs> shade. <laughs> uh, and, and he goes, he actually asked me, he goes, what's wrong with your food? And I, I was like, well, it, it was amazing. There, there's nothing wrong with my food, but you're twice my size and you finished your plate. Why would I finish my plate and eat the same amount as you? Yeah. It's not like we're getting a small and a large plate. We ordered the same plate, right? So we don't think about stuff like that when we're out at restaurants that when, you know, a, a more petite person or a smaller person or someone that is trying to be healthier orders, you're getting the same size as like someone that might be twice your size. You know, you know what I, you know what I started doing? Um, I don't do this with everybody, but for um, whether I'm like going out on a date or if I'm like going out with friends or whatever, I do this thing wh where we eat family style. We order family style. Mm. Right. So what that means is like instead of everyone ordering what they want, because, you know, we're, we're Americans. Everybody's like, I want my own plate. Urgh. Right. <laughs> I'm like, OK, let's just let's just order things one by one that we want to try. Right. We're order like either samples of or like individual plates and have those plates come out one at a time. As we get more hungry, we'll order another plate and we'll have individual plates and people just start like, OK, you, you order like you have like a meat item here. You have like a vegetable item here, so on and so forth. And people just start grabbing pieces of each. And then if we are hungry, we, we want to try something else on the menu. You bring something else. But what I notice when I do it like that, people usually stop eating sooner. Mm -hmm. right because i think there's this 
mindset, this psychological thing of like, okay, I ordered this plate, similar to what I said earlier. I ordered this plate. The restaurant must know what portion is relevant to what people want to eat, right? So if the steak is this big or if the chicken's this big or if you're, I don't know, if you're a pescatarian or fish or whatever, is this big, I need to finish this fish versus like if it's all communal, you won't have that pressure to eat it all. You'll just eat what is satisfying enough to you. So that's what I've noticed by putting that habit in there. I don't know if you have another like tactic. Uh, no, I actually love that. I love sharing plates with people and doing like a tapas style or a family style, like whatever. Cause I'm, I'm really big on tasting things too. You know, I think it's, it's interesting because it's all relative to the type of restaurant you're going to, too. If you're going to a fancy French restaurant, like they're going to give you like a tiny little plate, you know, as, as your main entree, because you're supposed to order many courses. Right. Okay. But if you're going to a TJI Fridays, you're getting a plate and it's going to be about a day's worth of calories for you. You know what I mean? Uh, it's going to be a large plate. TGI Fridays. <laughs> TGI Fridays. You know what TGI Fridays is just like any other like big chain restaurant is like, how many things can we stick in a deep fryer at the same time? That's really what that is <laughs> to me. That's what I, I, whenever you order the sampler, all a sampler is what we can sell for a lot of margins. And we don't have to do a lot of work to cook by just dumping it in a load of grease that was there for like weeks. That's what a sampler is in those restaurants. I don't, I never touched a sampler. Um, but, 